Welcome back everyone to my channel for another long-awaited album review. So today we are going to be talking about Yumi Hamasaki's album Love Appears and I'm really excited to talk about this one. This one we all have known about it, we've heard about it. It's one of the most popular albums from her discography and yes I'm finally going to go through all of it. I'm sorry that I haven't gotten a lot of reviews up and posted. It's just, you know, when I want to record a video, I have to be, the, I'm that person that I have to be in my house alone and no one else can be here. Like even if they're upstairs, like I feel like they're always listening in to me and it's just, you know, maybe that's just me, but you know, I just, I need to have total solitude for me to record these videos. Needless to say guys though, I am ready to dive right on in and talk about these tracks. So let's get started. Also, Side note before I forget, <laughs> I didn't know if you guys noticed, but I'm wearing my Ayumi Hamasaki Ballads shirt that I got recently with my, um, what was it, a two disc, three Blu-ray <laughs> edition, something, I don't know, remember what it was. But yeah, so this is the shirt, so we can see a gorgeous IU in this photo shoot, and then on the back, I don't know if you guys can see, but it says Ayumi Hamasaki Ballads. And so, yeah, I thought I would get my, you know, IU groove on by wearing my shirt while I did this album review. But, you know, that's just a little side note for you guys. Just, you know, trying to feel a little extra. But anyways, let's get back to it. Track one is just the introduction. And honestly, I really actually enjoy this introduction. I think it's really fun and it it really builds the vibe of this album because this entire album is pretty techno and it just really builds up that fire and that intensity to get you pumped up for it. And I love the vocals that they add in. And I use she always adds vocals typically into most of her introductory tracks. And just the Zubatega, like it's kind of eerie, but it really sets the tone for this. Track two is Fly High. And this goes literally perfectly from the introductory track right into this one. And it's a great upbeat song. This was one of her singles that she released. And I love this song, especially this part where she just raps really fast. I think it's so great. And this song has a lot of very unique compositions and it's like up and down and it's kind of all over the place, but I absolutely adore and love this. And the song itself, Fly High, in my opinion, because remember guys, what I say about these tracks is my personal opinion and also it's the meaning that I get from the song so that's the one beautiful thing about music is that each of us can get a different message or vibe from a song and so with this one to me it stood out the message of it's really positive you know saying that why stay on a certain set path of life like nobody can tell you what your path of life is going to be and don't be overwhelmed by that. You know, your life is yours and you, the sky is the limit. You know, fly high, get out of your comfort zone, do what you want to do and go where you want to go. And this is such an IU message to me. And ugh, this is like one of the most well-known ones. Like she sings this at a lot of her concerts. And so if you haven't heard the song, you need to go hear it. And this is just a classic IU jam and I love it. I never skip past this one. Track three is called Trauma, and this one, in my personal opinion, is notorious for the fact that she always forgets the lyrics to the song when she sings it live, and it's one of those just like inside jokes, I feel like, as a fan of IU, and it's just one of those charming things about it because it's just, it's so funny, but you just love it at the same time, and this song, I kind of have a special connection with this song because this was honestly... 100% guys, this was the very first Yumi Hamasaki song I ever heard in my life. And like I've mentioned, if you've seen my Grow Into One Kotokumi album review, that was the first time that I had ever heard of Kotokumi was when her song Real Emotion was the theme song for the Final Fantasy X-2 game because Final Fantasy X was one of my favorites. And when I found out there's a sequel, I like flipped out. And so this was when I was looking into more Final Fantasy X and X-2 things and someone had made a music video that had the Ayumi Hamasaki song Trauma. Of course, it was a different remix version of it, but this is when I got my first taste of IU and I just fell in love with the song, the beat of it. It was very different, especially for the time, like for that year, especially in America, like very different sound. And I absolutely love it. And I think the message of this song is really interesting and it's really cool because trauma in the sense of like not necessarily like oh my gosh devastating but 
in general, every single one of us goes through some kind of trauma in life. And in this song, she talks about today's happy face, today's sad face. Who can I show them to? And when I hear that, I think about how she's saying, you know, I've got trauma in my life. We all do. But who's willing to listen to my trauma? Who am I willing to open up and share that trauma with? But while this song is talking about something really deep and I feel very personal to us, it's still got a great uplifting beat and her kind of crying out, you know, with her crying out, in my opinion, to who can I talk to about this? But I'm going to be the ruler, like she says, like with my own ruler. So and I take that as I'm going to be the ruler of my own world and decide where I'm going to go with this and who I'm going to share this with. And I she just always be giving us those deep songs, guys, and I love it. Track four is called And Then. I really like this song. Right from the get-go, the song's got that creepy, like, eerie vibe. Like, she's going to take you somewhere else, to a whole other place, another world, whatever you want to say. And her vocals in this, like, the emotion in it is perfect. Like, you just hear that sound. Like, IU is one of those artists that I feel like no matter what she sings, she literally, you can hear and feel her heart going into that song. And just the whole aura of the song, I think, is amazing. And, like, you know, I'm kind of that person that likes creepy songs a little bit. But, like, I, I don't really know how to explain that or put it into words. But I really love this. And in the sense of, like, she starts off saying, like, I remember a story someone told me. And she's telling you that how essential things will unexpectedly show up and then how those things are things you can't see. And she's talking about believing in things she can't see. And she's telling this person like, let's run away together. Let's do this. You know, why can't I feel the certain way? Why can't I just open up and say the things that I want to say? And I like how the song's title and then, because in a sense, it's like, you're, you're looking at these lyrics and it's like, well, this is happening. And then what? And then what? Like, what's the expectation? What's going to happen? And kind of leaving that open to interpretation because, I mean, depending on who it is in your life and the type of choices you make, and then, you know, that's your story. That's your continuation. And that's a place that all of us get put at at some point in our life. And so I just love this. And then the song picks up with her vocals. And her vocals, ah. Oh. My gosh, I just love this song. Like everything is perfect and in range and it's a very unique song. I've never heard another song that sounds like this one and I never skip past this. Track five is Immature. I love the intro of this song. It just, again, sets the mood right away. And when I first heard this song ever, this beginning part, I did not expect it to lead into this next part right here. I didn't see that coming. But I really like this song and being the name Immature. So when I hear this song and I look at the lyrics translation, to me, this song is talking about, you know, as a young girl and in general, a guy, whoever you are. And, you know, you look at yourself and sometimes you ask, why am I here? And she says specifically in the lyrics that when we think that we were born in order to be happy, it's okay if we have days where we think that. And there's nothing wrong with thinking that and I feel like part of her saying that people look at you sometimes and they're like well that's a really immature why would you think that why would you go through this and think this and this and this and especially at this time at the age she was at I know she was kind of struggling a lot with the idea of becoming an adult like a full-on adult and letting certain things go because people look at you naturally and they're like well you should act your age but really what does that mean and I feel like this song really explores that idea but I love this right here, the chorus, the upbeat message I feel like that it brings because it's something I feel we can all really relate to because I mean, honestly guys, even at the age I'm at now, like half the time I still think I'm like 18 in certain circumstances and no matter what age you are, you're still going to have moments where you might be considered immature according to other people. But you know, life is what you want it to be and as long as you're enjoying it and having fun and doing your thing, you know, power to you track six is boys and girls and if you don't know this song I don't even know what to say to you <laughs> I feel like everybody should know this song she pretty much has sung it almost at every single concert I think almost every single one of them 
if I'm not mistaken. But yeah, so she sings this song a lot. This is always the one, you know, that she's over there throwing those little balls out at the concerts with like her autograph on it. And it's a very happy, uplifting song. Like this is definitely a song to me personally that I always listen to in the summer because it's, it's so positive, you know, talking about the boys and the girls, like, you know, spread your wings, fly, you know, you're shining. This is your time, you know, live it up, have fun and nothing can stop you because it's your life it's your choice and you know i think that this is just a really carefree song that gets everybody hyped it gets you pumped up and ready to go and i will admit i like this song but sometimes i do get tired of it when i've heard it like if i watch too many iu concerts in a row and i hear this song like i get kind of annoyed with it because not that i don't like the song but it's mostly the fact of when they like get to that part where she's like trying to get everybody to like jump up because some of the concerts they go like way too long with that and she makes them do it like again and again and again namely I'm thinking of Power of Music in her 2011 one like it just kept going and I was like just end the song I think it was that one or was it Bold and Delicious at the time I don't know but one of them it went way too long track seven is called to be and this is where we really come to the first ballad on this album and this song the composition of it is flawless. It is beautiful, it's fantastic, and it really draws you in. And right from the get-go, it automatically like is telling a story in my mind. And I love in the lyrics where she says that you're holding on to, she says, it translates to as rubbish. And I like how it's comparing it to the fact that everybody has like a treasure, right? Like all of us have something in our lives that we treasure, whether that's people that we love, our friends, some people it's more material things, their car, their house, whatever they own kind of a thing. It can be so many things. Everyone's treasure is a little bit different. But she says specifically, were there things that we lost when we obtained something great? And you know, you think about that and usually when you do obtain something great, there's always something you sacrifice or something that you lose. And it's not necessarily a bad thing when that thing is sacrificed or lost. But then she specifically says, we can't know now, and even if we regained it, it'll be different. And that's really true because when you are holding on to that treasure, typically you forget about everything else and you forget about what you sacrifice because it doesn't matter anymore because this treasure is the most important thing to you. And so then even later on, if you regain that treasure or that other thing you gave up again, it's gonna be a little bit different because you're different, you've grown, you've matured. And going on into the rest of the song about how this person, in a sense, is her treasure. And they're the reason she laughs. They're the reason she's living and has that reason to live. And without them, she's nothing. And I really like that because this song, To Be, anything can be your treasure. And finding out what gives you meaning or purpose in life, I feel, is very important. And it's something that I feel like we each need to come to find in our lives, you know? And so, I don't know. I just, I love this song. It's very deep and it's hard for me to explain or put into words like the thoughts that come into my head. Like I can picture them, but I don't know how to portray them in words for you guys. But this is a great song. Track eight is End Roll. This song is just stunning. I love the gentle nature of this song. And the instruments that they've used just really stand out. Like you can hear that tambourine and it's just, it adds an element to this song that you feel it. Even without hearing her sing yet, this song, like I feel it. And it automatically takes me into this story and to the emotion that I'm going to get from this song. And in this song, so she's basically at end roll, you know, at the end of a movie, you have credits or at the end of a TV show, whatever. And this relationship has come to an end. It's an end roll. And so she, I love how she says, if I had put something into words, then I'm sure we wouldn't have had a beginning where we could already see the end. So it's almost like she started this relationship, but already knew it was going to end at some point. And so she's hoping that they're both going to find their own paths. But in another sense, when you look at this song, I feel like you can also view this song in the sense of if you lose someone precious to you in your life, like maybe if someone has passed away. And this song has just like an ethereal presence to me that just 
I don't know, it just, it takes me up into the sky, like where you can, in my mind, like you're looking over all the people and the relationships through everyone's lives that have ended. Every single one of us at some point in our life will have a relationship and whether that's a romantic one, a friendship, family, it can be so many different areas. But this is such a relatable song and kind of that pain and accepting that you're sad, but then at the same time, sometimes you don't really feel sad because maybe you already knew it would end, so your attachment to it is different. So th this song is just beautifully composed. It's fantastic. Track nine is PS2, but from what I understand, this is basically Powder Snow 2. And the beginning of this song, it's it sounds like a, a hard-hitting song because it's vastly different from the previous sound of all of our other tracks that we've gone through so far on this album. Like this song really, I feel like, breaks things up. But the song, even though it does that, I love the message of this song because she talks about like if she took a trip into the past and there's a scrap of paper and it says on it, you can cry as much as you want until your tears dry up. And then it says later, you can yell out loud until your voice becomes hoarse. And at the very end of the song, it just says, time has passed. And I love that because you look at this and it's true. You can cry, you can yell, you can do whatever you want, but time passes. And this time, particularly in the song, the time has passed. It's too late. You can't do anything. It's not going to change anything. And that's something we all have to come to terms with, especially like when it comes to relationships, because most of us at some point have experienced where you're like, why did I say that? Why did I do that? We might still be together if I hadn't done that. And we blame ourselves for things. And this song, I feel like is about accepting that, accepting the fact that you know, you might have messed up or they might have messed up, but time's moved on and you've got to move on. And so the aura of this song, I feel like it's aggressive. It's a gentle, aggressive song, if that makes sense, because in the sense of that, she's trying to get the point across. Don't hold yourself back because you're still living in the past. You have to move on. So this is a great song. Track 10 is Whatever, and this is the Dubs 1999 Club remix that's on the album. And I know that this song didn't really do particularly well as a single. It's probably one of her lower selling singles. I mean, it's definitely better than some of her later ones, I feel like. But I actually enjoy this song. It's definitely like very techno vibe, but it's so catchy and addictive. Like you can't help but sing the wah, wah, wah with her. Like, and the, how it just like picks up. Like, I, I don't know, the song, it, it's really catchy. And I find myself enjoying it quite a bit, especially when I watch this one live. And I feel like this song is talking about how, you know, she's almost like waiting for someone, but she's having to, she's trying really hard to hang on and not give up, but she's going numb. She's going cold while waiting for this person. And the song being titled whatever in the sense, I feel like it's like, well, you know, whatever, I'm going to do whatever it's going to take. Or it could also be taken as whatever, I guess I should move on. So I feel like there are different realms that you could look at this song. And I haven't really dove fully into this song as much as I could probably on the meaning of it. But for what it is, I think it's a good song. Do I listen to it all the time? Typically not, but I do enjoy it, especially mostly when I watch her do it live because it is really catchy. And just like the previous song, the Powder Snow 2 or PS2, that one, I don't typically listen to it very often, but I do like the message of that song. I just needed to add that in there. But I love just the, ah, 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 ah. like the song is just fun. It, it's just very different and it definitely stands out. So I think that's why I enjoy it too so much. Track 11 is called Too Late. And this song is very interesting to me in the sense of it's just, it sounds very unique, not necessarily the instrumentals of it, but just like the rhythm of the song kind of confuses my head, if that makes sense, because it's da 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 like I don't know, like it it does yeah this. Like it's just such a strange flow, I feel like, for a song lyrically. And so I'm not like a huge fan of it. But again, this song is basically another one of like, you know, time runs out, it's too late, and money runs out, glory isn't worth much either in life. And I, 
I think it's a, a great song in that sense. And I do, for the most part, like the chorus here. So, yes, I... Uh, I enjoy the chorus, but that whole beginning part with the beginning verses, it always throws me off. Like, no matter what, I've listened to it time and time again, but it, something about it is just odd to me and doesn't flow right in my mind. Like, my brain gets confused. But this song, it's all right. I don't typically listen to this one hardly ever, but, you know, it, it's there, and I do still think IU did a good job with it. 12 is the song appears, and this is the album version, of course. This song is gorgeous and stunning and I love it it's catchy it just draws you in and the story that it tells and we all know as of now that she did come out and say that this song is supposed to be about Max Matsuda that's his name right that's his name right or am I thinking of someone totally different regardless it's that guy like we all know who that guy is and this song, while people were like, oh my gosh, like there was some controversy with it. People just saying, you know, like, oh, I can't listen to this song the same now. Like, oh, not about that guy. But I actually appreciate this song even more now, if that is the case, because this is her literally music, okay? When people write songs, it's usually about things you've experienced and how you're feeling. And young IU at this point was in a situation and this is how she felt. And she's singing from her heart how she felt. And we've all been at that age and that time. And so I feel what she's going through. Like, I understand that. And I love that, like how personal it is, you know, about the first time I called what she was doing. And what a personal song, you know, like I feel like that's really powerful. And I love in the chorus where it says, Lovers appear very happy walking hand in hand, don't they? It appears as if everything's going well for them, right? But only they know the truth. Because that is, I've never heard a more true statement, honestly. Because it, you know, you think about it. Like you go out there and to the store, wherever, out on the street, to the park, wherever you're walking, and you see lots of couples a lot of the time. But you don't really know what's going on behind the scenes. Someone might be miserable, but they look happy on the outside. And you might have someone that looks miserable, but they're actually really happy together. Maybe they just got into a brief argument. You know, there's so many different facets of a relationship. And I just love that. It, it really explores relationships in this song. And it's such a true statement. And just uh, the lyrics here are just amazing. The flow of it, her vocals, the instruments, like everything it just really gets you into this song it's hard not to like this song in my opinion i always listen to this one i really like this track 13 is called monochrome and this is another amazing song from iu like i can't compliment this song enough like just like appears i adore this song and love it and it's just beautiful it's unique and i love this song like her lyrics she is such an amazing and skilled lyricist like for real like this is something i would never even comprehend or think about like in the lyrics she's talking about how she's gonna she's looking for her sunglasses basically to not have any color so that her world becomes monochrome and what a like poetic way to say that she just wants to block everything out you know and she just wants to be able to focus on this one moment and block everything all the other colors of the world out just to remember this time because basically in a sense what i get from this is that she wanted to be with someone and it's just not going to happen and she thought that all these things were happening and they really weren't and she's trying to convince herself that she's okay literally she says i nodded saying i'm okay because i'm very strong and so i feel like you can really relate to this whole song and then at the end trying to convince yourself i'll be all right and just the chorus like i love this song like the just the way it's all composed and put together is amazing and i wish she sang this one more in her live performances i know recently in her online concert she did last year not i don't think it was the i think it was not no trouble not saigo no trouble and so that one she did sing this song again and it was beautiful to hear her sing it again like i this song deserves so much more attention i feel like so if you haven't listened to this one please go listen to this i think this is just such a fantastic song 
Track 14 is our interlude. So it's kind of interesting. I feel like the placement of this interlude in the sense that it's really far down the track listing. I mean, this is literally 14 and there's only 16 tracks. But at the same time, I feel like it does break it up because we've kind of gone on this big techno adventure in a sense with a lot of the music. And now it's kind of chilling out, you know, it's bringing it down for the final close. And so I don't typically really mind this interlude because it is a kind of a good little break but at the same time like it doesn't really add much personally in my opinion so I mean I could live without it. Track 15 is called Love Refrain. When I first heard this song I was not really a fan. It's interesting like I feel like I'm just like walking into a club or something back in like the 90s where I'm just like mm-hmm like just a really chill tone. But then it changes up here and it actually turns into like a ballad. So like the beginning part does not make me think this song's gonna really be a ballad, but then it does go into it. And this still isn't really one of my favorite ballads. Like I think it's just all right, but I think the lyrics are fantastic. They're always good. The, I never typically have an issue with I use lyrics because this is a very relatable song talking about like, you know, that she can't be with this person, but she wants to say thank you for all the feelings she's had with it, the experiences she's had with it. And I think that's something that we all need to be able to appreciate and understand with the relationships in our life. Like I've definitely had, you know, my past relationships, ones that I thought I was going to be with forever. And then things just really went in a total different direction that I never saw coming. And now where I'm at in life, you know, I look back at those and they were hard. Like it was depressing. I was crying, you know, but I am really grateful for those relationships. And, you know, especially one of them that I was very close to and that I thought I was going to marry at one point. Um, you know, I, it's one of those things where it's like, I still love him, but it's a different kind of love. It's more of the sense of he's a good person and I'd want him to be happy. And I just hope he finds that happiness because I'm really happy where I'm at and I'm married now and I'm absolutely in love with my husband and like we have a really great marriage. And so it's just, you know, I feel like it's accepting that your fate with someone isn't going to work out the way you want, but still being grateful to them because you learned a lot in that experience, in that relationship. And I feel like this song explores that realm. And so the lyrics, I think, are really poetic in that sense, but... As for the song, I typically don't ever actually listen to this one. Track 16 is Who, and all of us are very familiar with this song because this is always typically I use closing song to each of her concerts. And you know, it's very deservably so because the song is really beautiful. And you know, just when you hear this soft piano med melody, like it's just, it hits your heartstrings. And the message of the song is really beautiful and something I feel like we could all sing to someone that we really love and thinking about that person who's always been there for you, who's the one that's there to lift you up when you're struggling and whose shoulder you can cry on and you hope that wherever they are that you can reach them, this message will reach them. And you know, I feel like that's such a beautiful song. It's a really beautiful message that uplifts you, makes you feel warm inside. And this song too is very, you know, could for her be for her fans. You know, who lifts her up when she's sad? Her fans, they love her. They treasure her and her songs because they connect with them so well. And so I feel like this for her especially can go in many different realms. But this is a really beautiful song. So our final track on this album technically is not considered a track because it is in the whole track of who it's a hidden secret bonus track is Canaria and this basically translates to canary and this song is really intriguing to me because it's not a song that stands out to me in the sense of like wow, like I'm amazed by the song. I love this. Like I, you know, I wish you would sing this one more. It's very mellow and it's a song that I envision in my head that it's just her thinking to herself and talking gently to herself about a situation. And 
this is like I, I'm still trying to like understand this song I guess in a sense in the translation like I look at it and you know she talks about in a sense that the canaries the birds themselves they've it, they're it's not that they can't cry but they've chosen not to they're trying not to and so I, this could relate in a sense in my personal opinion again I feel like I say that 500 times but that you can choose when to cry and when not to and sometimes it's best not to and so I that's kind of what I feel like I get from it but I do like that the chorus is definitely different right here but this song at the same time is almost kind of whiny to me and I I don't know like I don't typically ever really listen to this one it's I think the music video is really cool with like all the jewels on her face but I don't know I just don't typically what's what's the right word I'm looking for I don't typically circulate towards this song steer towards I don't know what I'm trying to say but hopefully you guys get it so those are all my thoughts on the Ayumi Hamasaki Love Appears album track by track. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Let me know if you guys, which songs are your favorites. I'll definitely put what my top five favorites are down in the description box below if you are wanting to check that out. And I wanted to show you guys, this is my copy of the Love Appears album. I did of course get um, just, they don't, they didn't, weren't doing DVDs at the time, but this is what it was where it comes with the second disc that has the extra like mega mixes of the songs. I am not going to go through an, a review of those songs, but I will say that number four on the extra CD powder snow acoustic orchestra version is amazing. Oh my gosh. I love that one. It's stunning. And I honestly like, kind of wish that was the original one. Like just, that's my personal opinion, but <laughs> anyways. So, um, yeah, so that was your back. That was your cover. I'm really upset. I don't know if you guys can tell the lights like hitting it the wrong way, but there's this crack right here. Mm. Like such a pet peeve of mine, but I will show you guys. I mean, the discs aren't anything like super special. They're just your typical silver disc with the name on it and same for the other one. So I'm not even going to bother showing that to you, but yeah, I wanted to show you, of course, here we have on the inside. Oh my gosh, I'm dropping everything. So, okay, here is our little um, OB here. Turn it the right way for you guys. So, okay, here is our cover of the album itself. And she looks gorgeous. Like, her skin is always flawless. I love her with the long hair. I mean, she's got basically that mermaid hair, you know, just covering up her boobs. But, you know, whatever works there. So, nothing much here. Just a white background listing the songs. So, we've got one of our first pictures here with, like, a butterfly. This makes me think of Kotakumi because, you know, her song Butterfly. And she's always got, like, crazy nails like that. And so, of course, this is our lyric book, of course. But I think she looks really beautiful in this picture here. Even though you can't see most of her face, obviously. But, like, just the pose with her hand is just really beautiful. And this butterfly makes me think of butterfly clips as well. I don't know if anybody else wore those back in the 90s, but I definitely did. And so, yeah, here are some more with her looking stunning. Sorry, I know the light is just like glaring into this. So I hope you guys can see it well. And yeah, another really good shot. And these are really beautiful as well. And Ayu, she just is a beautiful girl in general, just really pretty ne nice little necklace shot and I love how you know like the song monochrome they kept the inside of this monochrome like I, I don't know I thought that that was kind of cool and maybe I'm the only one that made that correlation and it has nothing to do with that at all but you know that's just what I wanted to think so and there's another one with her and the butterfly ah, and then we've got like some small little pictures like of the whole booklet pictures up there at the very top and then here are some of the singles and the pictures that were released on that. And then IU getting some of her makeup done. And um, yeah. Oh, and then <laughs> if you open this, then you can see the whole um, album cover picture there. So yeah, that is really beautiful. And then over here... We have the disc two extras. And the only really picture that it has there is from her um, A Song for X album. 
And then, yeah, it's just got some credit information. And then there's a CDs extra menu, I guess, if you put it in your computer. But, um, yeah. Anyways, so that is her Love Appears album from Ayumi Hamasaki. I hope you guys enjoyed this album review. I had so much fun talking about it with you guys. And again, remember, let me know what tracks you guys like the most. And if there's any songs that you don't really, like, aren't really a fan of on it, what are some of your favorite music videos from this era? But this was a fantastic album. It is definitely worthy of all the praise that it got and is one of the most amazing ones in her discography honestly and you know it's just this album stands out in the sense that it's very unique and it's sound because it's definitely more techno driven I feel like or I guess I, I don't know do you call that EDM I don't know I don't know I don't really mess with that realm of music a whole lot but I just think that this album its sound itself is very unique from all the other albums and so it stands out a lot to me and it's got a lot of really great classics so definitely if you have never checked out this album guys please check it out and I will catch you guys in the next album review so see you next time <laughs> Oh,